Lord God Almighty. Come on, give him thanks. To know Christ is a choice. To walk with him is a choice. To serve him is a choice. Can you lift your hands and let him know that you've come to know him this morning? You've come to walk on him so you can serve him. Thanks, God. Siba kela kotre yes kalabantela. Andelele ko shaka de ke so kre ke pala gina nama. Zeze ko mbrege des kula kela ke boshka. Ele bosha la mbrege sko te ke la bangela ra boshka la ndi ala. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, Hallelujah! You have won the victory. Sing it from your heart, Hallelujah! You have won it all for us. Death could not hold you down. Yes, Lord, you are the reason, King. You see it, see that in majesty. Yes, you are the reason, King. Declared with your mouth, you have won the victory. Sing it from your heart, hallelujah. You have won it all for us. Death could not hold you down. Yes, you are the reason, King. And seated, seated in majesty. Yes, you are the reason, King. Lift your hands up, lift them up. It is the risen and seated king. He is the risen and seated. And the good news is that we are risen, we have been raised and made to sit together with him. We share in his nature. We share in his positions. We share in his power. And we share in his glory. Oh, we bless your holy name. Thank you. Glory be to God. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. We've come to this mother, but you and you alone. You deserve a glory, O God. We lavish our praise on you, Lord. We lavish our praise on you, O God. Can you lift your hands and begin to pray this morning? Lift your hands and begin to give praise. Say la la gela ma. Zebra de ke de de be se kumbre ke mande de de. Ze ye ala. Ze la ma 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 kamande da be hasiadi. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Spirit of God. We're here to know him. We're here to know him. Teach us Christ. Really show us him.
tonight. Holy Spirit. Ay, ala la ba se kere bocha. Ay, ge. Ay, ala la bocha la ba. Rebe, be, 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 kosha la gamanga la. Andele, le, 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 bo, si kala la ba kere ba. Mama, na, na, la, 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 kosha la ba. Era magela de. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Beloved Father, we're here because we want to know you. We want to walk with you. And we want to serve you. You've given us your spirit. Beloved Spirit of God, teach us Jesus again. For you said as we have received him, so walk in him. And we can't walk in him if we don't know him. So teach us so we can walk with him. Let, 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 let our minds be renewed. Let scares be shifted from our sight. Let strongholds be shut down. Let every high thing that has exalted itself against the knowledge of Christ be made subject to the obedience of Christ through the ministry of the word. Spirit of God, glorify Jesus again. Let sick bodies be healed. Let the bound be loose. Let Jesus be revealed and glorified. And every grateful saint shout a big amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Please have your seat. The Spirit of God gave me something. I, one of the ways I serve God is to write. You can be seated. One of the ways I serve God is to write. You need to know what God has enabled you to do so you can make your own contribution to the kingdom. One of the ways he has, apart from the fact I'm called to preach and to teach, I'm also called to write. Yeah. One of the things God gave me this morning was an interesting topic. You will read it because I'm going to post it later after church. It's called Knowing Christ, Your Choice, and distractions knowing Christ your choice and what and distraction trust me it will bless you so immediately after church go to I'll put the link on our whatsapp page so you can read that um, I'll talk a little bit about it during this meeting that reminds me we're going to have a work we've not had any workers meeting this year we're going to have a brief workers meeting immediately after second service so all workers, not just heads and assistant. If you are in, you're in Oshri, don't, don't run away from church. Immediately after second service, be seated. All right? Any, uh, or every and all workers in church, immediately after second service, make sure you are seated for the meeting. Nobody should remind you. Praise the Lord. All right. Then um, we are having uh, a combined service at the end of this month, the last Sunday actually of this month, which is an Easter Sunday. And I expect everybody praying and inviting people to watch the meeting. Have your sphere, your immediate environment, your neighborhood, where you live. There are people who don't go to church. Like you came to church this morning, there are some people that don't go to church. Go and invite them. Tell them we have a meeting on Friday, on Sunday. Let them come with you to church. Not even wait till Easter. Every Sunday, invite somebody to church. This is one um, area that many have abandoned no plan to reach out to someone during the week. All we do is our business. Go to work from morning till night. Pursue our interests, survival. And that's all we do. We don't think about souls. We don't think about people that God wants us to reach. One of the reasons you are saved, or the reason you are saved, is to help people to reach out so that men can be saved and to help them with the knowledge of the truth. When you invite someone to church, you are helping the person come to the knowledge of the truth. Because without the truth, people live all lie. And trust me, our world is being controlled, manipulated by lie. Every chaos you hear in the world is a manifestation of a lie or the lie of the enemy at work. Every pain, every suffering, every confusion, every crisis that you see is because of the lack of the knowledge of the truth. Like that. My people have been this Lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge is lack of knowledge of the truth. And so we are the church whom God has saved and raised 
as a representative of the kingdom. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, I think verse 18 or 17, he says, we're ambassadors for Christ. You are not just to marry, have children, walk, you know, then when you're old, die and get out. No. Those are just part of the attachment, the reason for life. The reason for life is to know God. and The reason God brought you here is not to be married and have children. The reason God brought you here is to know him, walk with him, and to serve him. That's your purpose. And he will show you what unique way you can do all those things. When we come here and we get entangled with the issues of life, we forget why we were sent here. Peter said we are a pilgrim. It's someone who is a travel through. We're traveling through life. Unfortunately, people only, you know, they kind of get it when they are closer to dying. But you shouldn't. You are not here for you. You're here for him. Look at anybody on you. You're here for him. Okay, let's make it more personal. Rise up from your feet. Go to like three people. Say, you are not here for you. You are here for him. Can you tell somebody that? Hallelujah. All right. Some of you did not see it. Well done, big boys and big girls. Listen. Listen to me, everybody. Listen. Listen. This selfish portrait about life is not kingdom. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? This selfish portrait and outlook to life is not kingdom. It proves that you are not growing in your knowledge of Christ. When you are frustrated, it's about things concerning you. When you are not happy, it's about things concerning you. When you are upset, it's about things concerning you. When it's a financial problem, it's not financial crisis that I don't have been going to the kingdom. It's about paying your rent or paying some. It's about you. Always about you. That's one of the signs of the end time. Men shall be first of themselves more than love of God. That's where many find out. Think about the kingdom to seek and to save that which was lost. If you look at some of us, all we're thinking and frustrated about is just our life. We're thinking about our life. What I'm going to eat, what I'm going to wear. When am I going to marry? When am I going to die? When am I going to settle down? The things that were meant to serve us, not define who we are. Some of you will never be happy until things are going on well with you. Or it's not a function of you. Not a function of him anymore. You come to church, you are not excited about knowing God. You come to church, you can go out 20 times and make phone calls and get distracted or even leave a message to meet you while service is going on. That just tells us we'll become very selfish and self centered The reason you are here is because of him. The reason you have, a, you have breath in your nostril is because of him. Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and what? Loses his own soul. Just one snap. And you see the point in you heard of the unfortunate incident of the MD of managing director of one of the banks. Who in an unfortunate event, one day he died, his wife died, his son, early son died. He's finished building a what you call multi-billion Naira state of the heart house in Banana Island. That's where the wealthy people display their wealth. They say the house, I've not seen it, but from what I've read, it's, you know when they say modern state of the heart, if you're not technologically inclined, there are technologies now where you have to go and open doors, open the door will open, lights will, the light will go up. If you put punch code, the house know you are coming. It will open the gate for you. The toilet, come to wash your bumble for you. Yeah. Because that's where technology is going. And we need to be very careful because anything that makes you independent of God is risky. Anything that gives you... This morning, God showed me something. There is a false sense of peace. Everybody say false sense. You know that, what that false sense of peace? When to you... Everything is working as you want it. Everything is going the way you want it. Dreams, according to you, are working out. Business is working out. Everything's going on. But at the end of the day, all these seemingly good things, it's not helping you know God and walk with him. That's a false sense of peace. 
Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? That's the reason some will go and give God thanks. But the same people don't pray. They don't read the Bible anymore. The so-called testimony of breakthrough does not impact. They are, they are still angry. They are still vengeful. They are still full of offense. When they go through crisis, they still cry as if they've never met God before. May God open our understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. So please, invite someone. I needed to say that to underscore the importance which some of you don't chat anymore. You've gone to sleep in that area. Invite someone to church. Go out. Get out. You don't have to wait for us to do ambi. Do your ambi yourself. Use your phone. Take the design. Send it to someone. Listen when they say things like that. Don't sit down and wait till Sunday and you just walk with your old self and no investment, no contribution from your side. All you do is just me, myself, and my business. Until you repent from that, there's a level you can go with God. Because it's not about you. You didn't ask God to create you. You didn't ask God to give birth to you. You didn't ask God to bring you into this world. What makes you think that when you came here, you can fly by yourself? Everything about me came from God. And don't waste this, this life for yourself. Jesus said, if you save it, you will lose it. If life is about you, you're not living. And one of the ways you know you are living for God is, how many people are you touching? Jesus, it's not in you to be a monument. It's in you to be a blessing. When last did you pray for somebody? When last did you minister to someone? When last did you intercede for someone? Who are the people or the persons that your life is making a difference with? January came and gone. February came and gone. Nothing. March came to almost March. What contribution have you made to the kingdom? In terms of people's life. Think about it. Hallelujah. All right, let's get into the word. On Wednesday, I've told you, go and listen to the message so you can update. All right? Try to work on your consistency in hearing God's word. Teaching this series on Sundays and Wednesdays. So make sure you catch, I posted that on the platform. Today, I'm going to begin uh, from where I stopped on Wednesday. I said, faith sees and speaks the word of God. Say that with me. Say, faith sees and speaks the word of God. I've acknowledged what I've said and what God has done. Is that not so? Yeah, so, and, and, and you need to pay particular attention to the tense in God's word. There are statements of fact. There are statements of promise, but there are statements of facts. For instance, Jesus come is a statement of promise. Statement of promise. Every statement in the Bible about the coming of Christ is a future. Because we don't know the date. When the Jesus ascended into heaven, and the disciples were wondering what happened, because they saw him getting up in the air, and disappeared, you know. And then just, what are you guys gazing at? Same Jesus you see take away will come back again. Go back and do what he called you to do. So Jesus will come again. And, and the statement sure, to the coming of Christ is always in the And And one of the ways well is to make of the Bible. Do not post to the future what God says he has done. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? You will not be, because like I told you, faith is agreeing with God. Work together, except they be agreed. Why does faith please God? Faith pleases God because faith agrees with God. When you walk by faith, you are walking in agreement with God. It means your mind agrees with his mind, your words agrees with his words, and your actions agrees with his actions. And may I add, it also means your tenses agrees with his word, tenses. You don't say a was to what God says is an is. You don't say a future to what God says is, it is an is. When it comes to who you are, it is not will be, it is what it is. Are you hearing what I'm saying? For instance, in 1 John, are you paying attention? In 1 John chapter 4 verse 17, the Bible says, Hearing is our love made perfect. 
that in the day of judgment, we will have boldness. You know, I grew up from a very strong religious background. And, and, and the way they taught me about judgment day was a terrible day. There is a day you will be shaken in your boots because you are standing before the judge of the old earth. What, what, what they didn't teach us was they didn't make the difference between the judgment of the sinners and the judgment of the saints. There are two different things. For the judgment of the sinner, it will be a terrible day. Yeah, it will. Because their judgment has already been determined. Jesus said in John 3, He that believeth on me is what? Huh? He's saved. And he that doesn't believe on me is what? Condemned already. So on the judgment day, they are just only going to receive their condemnation. But they didn't make the distinction. So until I started growing in the knowledge of the word and understood from scripture that the judgment of the saint is different from the judgment of the unbeliever. The judgment of the saint is to ditch out rewards based on how you have served God while you lived here. Because there will be a time for reward. Are you hearing me? How you live and how you serve God will be rewarded on the judgment day. But, but, but when we stand before God, we're not going to stand trembling. We're going to stand bold. Not bold because of we, but bold because of who we are in him. So the Bible says in 1 John 4, verse 17, it said, Herein is our love made perfect, that we will have boldness in the day of judgment. Why? Because as he is. So we will be. So are we. So if as he is, so are we, then that means what he says you are, you are. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Turn your Bible to Philemon 6. Put it on the screen. Philemon 6. That later is just, you know, arranged as a single chapter. So you can pull it. Philemon 1.6. I want us to read it together. Philemon 1.6. You need to understand faith. What faith is. And now it's engaged. All right. Can we look at the screen? That the communication of your faith. What is the communication of your faith? The proclamation of your faith. Are you hearing me? The communication or the proclamation. The spirit of faith believes with the heart and declares with what? The mouth. What God has said, what God has done. So he says the communication of your faith will become effective or effectual. The word effectual means producing the desired result. What does effectual mean? Producing the desired result. Your faith proclamation are designed to produce a desired result. And so the scripture says, your faith communication will only produce the desired result when it acknowledges every good thing which is, not was. Is, is, is. Faith is now. Now is faith. Acknowledging every good thing which is in you in Christ. So the key here is that who you are is as a result of who you are in him. So your faith acknowledges every good works. What is good works there? The good work is talking every good thing rather. Every good thing is referring to what you have been made in Christ. So faith says I am the righteousness of God. Say that with me. I, am the righteousness of God. I didn't hear everybody. The religious people will say, nobody is righteous. Yes, if you are not born again. But the day you got born again, you were made the righteousness of God. And when you say, I am the righteousness of God, you are acknowledging that you are now a possessor of the nature of God and that you are a son of God. And that you are what you are, not by your merit, but by the sacrifice of Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when Satan comes with, with attacks of condemnation and guilt, because one of the ways the enemy seeks to point or puncture our confidence is to get us to second guess who we are. And if you don't know who you are, your language will show. Did you hear what I said? If you don't know who you are, your language will show it. That's why when he came to Jesus, what he said, if you are the son of God, if you are. Of course, Jesus knew who he was. Because right from when he was young, he was... I hope you know that Jesus had to become... The word Jesus, as a man, 
only came alive when he was born. I hope you know that. Before Jesus came to earth, Jesus didn't exist in eternity. He was called the Word. Did you hear what I said? He was called what? The Word. Do you know Jesus was in the Garden of Eden? Oh, you didn't know? Who did you think called Adam? It was Christ. Because in eternity, he was known as the Word. So, when, watch what they said. They heard the voice walking. Who is the voice? Christ. That walking, that personality that was walking in the garden was Jesus. It was Jesus that called Adam. Where are you? I'm, so, I'm sure some of you didn't realize that. He was the voice walking in the garden. That was Christ. And in eternity, that's why First John says there are three that bear witness in heaven. Is that not so? The Father, the Word, and the Spirit. So when God needed to save man, the heart of his creation, the Word had to become a man. That's how Jesus was born. The Word became... Um, John 1, 14 says the Word became flesh. The Word became flesh means the Word became human. God is not a human. God is an eternal being. All existence comes from him. But in order to save man, God had to become a man. Which meant he had to be born like a man and he would learn like a man. That's what the Bible says. He grew in wisdom. Is that not so? and in statue, and in favor with God and with man. He had to grow. He had to go through the stages of birth, the stages of growth. He had to learn. That's why he was always going to church. I hope you know Jesus was going to church. Read uh, Luke 4. And he went into the synagogue as his customs were. I hear you are in church. You don't go to church regularly. I don't know who you are following. He had to learn. And in the learning of who he was, do you know his father, Jacob, I mean Joseph, what you could call foster father, you know? Eh? And I hope you know that uh, Mary is not the mother of Jesus. I hope you know. No, he's a vessel that he used. He never called her mother once. Read your Bible, not once. It's our biological inclination that makes us call Mary the mother of Jesus. He's not the mother of Jesus. He's a vessel. I know religion has taught some of you that, but that's, read your Bible very well. You know, when he was on the cross and she was crying, John was with her. You know, John was there. You know what he said? He said, woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Never called her once. It was people, when he was preaching one time in the crusade, and he said, hey, your brother, your mother. He said, he said who is my brother and my mother? He said, this one's here who sit here. They are the ones who are my father and my mother. Those who do the will of God. I know that one is a blow to some of your religious whatever, but it's scripture. I'm not telling you what I think is in the Bible. Read your Bible. So Joseph must have taught Jesus, taught him because the name Jesus means Savior. Are you hearing me? Because that was the name the angel said, a child will be born and you shall call him Jesus. That was the first time the name was mentioned. And it is through that name divinity became humanity. That's why Jesus represents God, son of God, son of man. God and man becoming one. Are you understanding what I'm saying? He did that because of his love for us. If you read Philippians chapter 2, the Bible said he laid aside. He put aside who he is as God and took upon himself the form of a servant and became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. In, in um, Hebrew chapter 2, verse 15, he said when he wanted to come, he didn't take the form of angels. He took the form of the seed of Abraham. That's why it's called the seed of Abraham. And I hope you know that the seed of Abraham is not Isaac. Huh? The seed of the promise, I hope it's not, you know it's not Isaac. Isaac was just a type shadow. The seed of Abraham is Jesus. That's when you read the Bible, you'll see all this. 
Jesus must have been taught by his father, Joseph. Now, this is what the circumstances surrounding your birth. This is how you were born. This is what I was told by the angel about you. All the years from the birth of Christ till he was 30 years old, we only had a preview of his life when he went to the temple and didn't follow the parents back. That's the only thing the scripture gave us about. Why? All the other periods he was learning about himself, learning about his mission or his assignment. And when it was time for him to do what God called him to do, he stepped out. And before he stepped out, God had already raised a, uh, a forerunner, John the Baptist, and given him a vision that there is one coming that I have sent. When you see him, you will know him. How will you know the spirit would descend on him? So the day Jesus came to the uh, river of Jordan and John looked at Jesus, he saw the spirit descending on him and he screamed, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. So he knew. So when Jesus came, he said, Hey, you're the one that the, that the Father has told me about. I, I am not worthy to baptize you. You should be the one baptizing me. He said, No. Let's fulfill all righteousness for now. And as Jesus was baptized, the Bible says he came out of the water, God gave his validation. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He has not started ministry. He has not done any miracle. So for, for you, many of you who think that God is pleased by what you do, you better revise your head. God is pleased with you because of Christ. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is, say with me, say, God is pleased with me because of Jesus. And God had to say that, and there was a reason for that. Because later in the temptation, which came a few hours later, the first thing Satan said, if you are the son of God. So you need to know who you are. Acknowledging every good thing. Faith acknowledges who you are. Every time you speak your position, your condition, you speak what you're going through, you are not in faith, you are going against God. Because faith only sees and says what God has said. Is that clear? That is why faith is believing with the heart the spoken word of God. Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. I've taught you how faith is stirred in the heart. How faith rises. You have to keep hearing God's word. If you're going to believe God in an area, you need to expose yourself to the hearing of the word in that area. Otherwise, the faith to act in that area will not rise. Are you hearing me? I, I made a post during the week that faith is not a, it's not a mental, intellectual exercise. Faith is a product of intimacy with the word. If you want to walk in faith in an area, you have to expose yourself to the hearing and hearing of the word in that area. Once you do, the word of God will renew your mind. The word of God will pull down all the unbelief in that area and will cause the knowledge of God's word to rise in your heart. And when faith rises, you must engage faith through your language. Is that clear? Yeah, you must. Because faith that is not spoken is not faith expressed. Am I making any sense? So you know how faith comes. If you're struggling with believing God in an area, that means you're not walking in faith in that area. And the only cure for that is to keep hearing the word. One of the reasons that God created the church system is to expose his children to the regular, consistent hearing of the word so that the word can cause faith to rise from their heart. I've told you, where is faith located? Very good. Where is faith located? Say faith is located in my human spirit. Yeah. And, and if faith is going to rise up, it takes the word of God to pull it. And if you don't expose yourself to the hearing of God's word, faith will not rise. You'll be struggling and walking like a carnal man in that area of your life. Amen. Amen. So, faith is believing with the heart, the word or the rema God has spoken or the spoken word of God, and then speaking it with your mouth to enforce it. Faith is what? Believing. Say with me, say, faith is believing with the heart and speaking with the mouth. Say that one more time. Say, faith is believing with the heart and speaking with the mouth. If you believe it, you will say it. 
If you say it, you believe it. If you don't believe it, you will not say it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I've told you what it means to believe in the heart. It's very simple. If you've been coming to church and you've been attending Bible study, you will not have two mind when it comes to what does it mean to believe God. Bible says, how can they believe except the word? Here. So where does believing begin with? What you hear. You can't believe what you don't know. You can't. You can only believe what you hear. So it, it, it's, it's safe to assume or to follow this line of thought that what you hear is what you choose to believe. Is that not true? What you hear is what you have chosen to believe. If you are not hearing God's word, it means you, don't, you have not chosen to believe the word. If all you hear is men, you have chosen to believe men more than God. Because what you believe comes from what you hear. Are you hearing me? Then if, if you're going to believe what you hear, you are going to engage meditation. Is that not so? Is that not so? This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall do what? Meditate on it, so you may observe to do all that is written therein. Meditation prepares us to do God's word. We have to put the word of God in our hearts. And when you meditate the word of God, you keep your attention. There must be time where you allow God's word. You focus your mind on God's word. And the word will take care of itself. Are you understanding what I'm saying? There must be time where you, you get God's word into your system. You listen to it. You say it. They won't depart from your mouth. You speak it. You speak the scripture. You say it day and night. You keep speaking it. Why are you saying it? Because the way you keep an emphasis of a thought in your mind is what you say. Because thoughts are generated from words. Is that not so? Huh? Yeah. Words generate thought. Words releases thoughts. Words generate thoughts. And words releases thoughts. So if you keep saying God's word over and over, day and night, a point will come you will observe to do what is written therein. That's, that's what meditation is. And if you don't have time to put God's word in your mouth, then you are not ready to believe God's word. Do you understand that? If you're not ready to put God's word in your mouth, you are not ready to do what? Believe God's word. Look at your neighbor and say, if you're not ready to put God's word in your mouth, you're not ready to believe God. So as we meditate, we come to the place of personal conviction or persuasion in the heart. It is from that inner persuasion, which is the place of faith, that we speak from. Faith is the product of meditation of the word. You meditate on the word, faith rises. If all you meditate on is what, you are, what is happening to you, you will have faith in your problem. Because the problem with us is that what some of us think about is all the things that are not working in our life. Even when they come to church, the way they look at God is that God see me or you don't see me finish. You know, say, if you don't help me now this week, I know we'll make up. It just shows that what you're meditating on is the issues in your life. God did not tell you to meditate on issue. He said, cast all your cares upon me. Meditate on me, my word. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall do what? Ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Meditating on problem doesn't solve problem. It only increases problem. Because what you meditate upon will multiply in your life. If all you think about are, are the fees you cannot pay and, and the business that are not working out and the needs that are in your life, you are meditating on the wrong thing. You are go, it will only lead to a life of worries and cares and, and frustrations and depression and all Christ. No, we, we look not at the things that are seen. Paul says we look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, and the things that are not seen are what? Eternal. I keep my gaze on Jesus. I keep my gaze on God's word. Irrespective of how I am feeling or what I am seeing or what is happening around me, my faith acknowledges every good thing because everything about me in Christ is good. Because God is a good God. So everything about me is good. So I keep my mind on good things. I keep my confession on every good thing which is in me in Christ. 
and the needs are piling up against me I declare he supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus and, and, you, and you're faced with situation that looks as if you are helpless and hopeless you declare the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man can do unto me the devil says are you sure are you sure do you understand what is going to you you open your mouth and you tell him it is written the Lord is my helper you pull out all the arsenals that you have. The revelation of scripture that you have. And you begin to declare every good thing which is in you in Christ. Stop speaking your first. I know so please. Can I, can I advise wives? Sometimes when there are needs in the house, be very careful how you talk to your husband. Be very careful. There's a way you talk. You will just, Satan will use you to minister. You know, I hope you know that one of the ways Satan reaches husband is through their wife. I hope you know that. I hope you know. You think it's, it's the scripture. Satan mentioned to, sit, um, to God. If, uh, the reason Job is not cursing you is because you have protected him. Remove the barrier and I will prove to you that he will curse you. Who delivered that message? Who delivered it? It was his wife. Because the people that are closer to you are the people that can do you more damage. So be very careful so that Satan doesn't use your mouth and destroy your husband. What is all this now? I didn't settle for this kind of thing now. What is going on? You are not helping him. You are not helping the situation and you are making room for Satan. You are not being honest when you communicate your frustration. You are truly honest when you speak your faith. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So no, I will tell you as it be. No, you are telling it as you see it. Not as it is. As it is is what God has said. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You will speak and say, hey, it's well. God will provide. I believe it. God is helping us right now. In the name of Jesus, our needs have been met. God is supplying our needs. Favors are open unto us. What is wrong with talking like that? But your selfishness will not allow you. I know Mary calls of how. Eh? I know Mary. Why, why is it that everything is upside down? The reason it's upside down is you. And the way you are talking. Because by your words you are justified and by your words you are condemned. That's what it is. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? One of the ways you nourish your men is to speak life to them. Don't remind them why they, of the things they're not doing well. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody say amen. amen. I didn't jab the women. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. So mind your mouth. Many of us are making room for the devil in our lives and in our home because of the way we think and the way we speak. We are people of faith. Say that. Say, I'm a person of faith. Say, we are people of faith. Say, we only say what he has said. Shout it. Say, we only say what he has said. When I feel like being depressed, I have no right to be depressed because as a child of God, I only have a right to be joyful. He said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. My children can easily pick a, when my mood changes. They can, they can, daddy, what's up? Your face has changed. I say, I'm, I'm okay. Thank you. You are called to live a life of joy. Stop behaving as if you are carrying the word on your head. You can't even carry it. Just, you know, acting very frustrated. Everything is, you know, not be you the first born, I'll show you know. You are not the first. There were people that came before you and there will be people after you. So stop acting as if the world will end with you. It's not going to end. It's only going to end when Jesus comes. And even if Jesus comes, there will still be tribulation of us. So tell your neighbor, say, stay in the place of faith. Ask your neighbor, where's your faith? You know, when Jesus asked them, where's your faith? Meaning he knew they had faith. So where did you keep it? Ask your neighbor, where's your faith? Some of you have folded it and put it inside box. Some of you have put it inside cupboard. Where's your faith? Hallelujah. Hear me. The elders heard what God said. They believed it. Bible says through it they obtained a good report. Is that not so? They believed it and as proof that they believed it, they kept speaking it. They spoke it until it framed their lives. Say amen. It framed their lives and their experience. They lived from the unseen realm. Through the word they heard and they spoke. Now, let's see another portion of scripture that confirms the same principle of faith 
that the elders walked in in Hebrew chapter 11 verse 2. Remember? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Is that not so? He says, by it, the elders obtained a good report. Say good amen. amen. Alright? The elders obtained a good report. And through faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God so that the things that appear were not made from things that, you know, that were seen. Is that not so? Alright. Let's look at another scripture. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4 from verse 16 to verse 20. One. Same principle, but we're looking at it as applied in the life of Abraham, whom the scripture described as our father in the faith. Say amen. amen. All right. Let me make a statement here. You know, <laughs> sometimes you see things going on in social media. That's why you need to be grounded in the Bible, scriptures. You hear people come up with one controversy, issues, and all that. I don't get involved with such things because the Bible says they are vain and they don't lead to edification. So I don't get involved with that. But, but, but I want to make one statement about scriptures that every, every born again believer need to be aware of. Scriptures never conflict. Did you hear what I said? Scriptures don't fight each other. They don't complete the they always interpret and complement one another. Truth is always consistent. Did you hear what I said? Truth is not debatable because truth is the person and it's Jesus. And he has given us revelations of the truth in documented written form in terms of dealings, stories, principles and all kinds in the Bible. What we have in the Bible is revelation of truth. So truth is always consistent. There is no conflict in the Bible. Scriptures always interpret and complement each other. There is no conflict and controversy among scriptures. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let me say this. Anytime anybody seems to be telling you they want conflict and controversy in scripture, it only exists in the mind of the one who does not yet have understanding. The reason you are thinking like that, and you're thinking there's controversy, is because you don't have Remember when uh, Philip saw the Ethiopian eunuch that was, you know, the Holy Ghost took him from Samaria. Remember? In a, in a mighty move of God, the Holy Ghost caught him and said, go towards the desert and meet, go there, towards Azotas or so. Say, go there. And when he got to the desert, he saw a carriage, a trail of a carriage, a very wealthy man. Bible makes us understand it's an Ethiopian uh, eunuch, a treasurer to his king. He was going. And, and the Holy Spirit spoke to him. He said, go and get close to that chariot, which was his chariot. And the moment he got there, he heard the Ethiopian eunuch reading the passage of Isaiah 53. Then what did Philip tell him? Understand it what thou readest. Are you understanding it? That's what he said. So if you think there's conflict and controversy in scripture, it's because you don't understand. When you understand, you won't see conflict. When your understanding is open, you will see light. Because the entrance of the word give it. So the Bible doesn't fight itself. So be very careful. So what of 1,044 people? Your question is still foolish. It's still foolish. Because if you're still asking about 144,000 people, that means you're, you don't have understanding. And some people don't ask questions because they want answers. They ask questions because they want control. Bless you. So it just shows the deception in your heart. Amen. Romans chapter 4. Are we there? From verse 16. Romans chapter 4 verse, verse 16. We're looking at the principles of faith here. Are we there? It says, therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. Why? To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is father of us all. Now, in this verse, there are two categories of people. There are the people who were regarded as products of the law, and there were people who were outside the law. Is that not so? 
or let me put it this way, they were Jews and they were Gentiles. The Jewish people were people that were handed over the law. The Gentiles were the hidden who had no covenant relationship with God. And so Abraham is the father of the Jewish people because the seed of Abraham was the progeny through which the Jewish people came. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yeah, because God told Abraham about what will happen in Egypt. See, 400 years from now, a people will rise from your seed, they will go into bondage, and I will deliver them from bondage. Remember when God spoke to him? So Abraham, technically, is the father of the Jewish nation. But the reason God chose the Jewish nation is so that through the Jewish nation, salvation will reach out to all. Is that not so? So God didn't just come to save the Jew. He came to save the Jew and to save all. So the Bible says in Romans 1.16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is what? The power of God unto salvation to him that believe. First to who? The Jew, and then to the Gentiles, and at as many that we believe. So here, God is about to share a principle of life, the principle of faith, and he's saying this principle of faith will go beyond the boundaries of nation. It's not just something that will belong to the Jewish heritage, but it will belong to all who we believe. So if you are believing God, if you believe in Christ, this belongs to you too. So the Bible says it is of faith. And the basis to cut across any limitation it will pave, God did not base the lifestyle of faith on the law. Are you hearing me? He based the lifestyle of faith on grace. Are you with me? And grace is entirely Jesus and nothing about you. Got the problem, one of the problems of the law is boasting. I keep the law. I keep the commandments. But there's always one place that you are lacking. Is that not true? Huh? So the Bible says, it is of faith that it might be by grace. Say amen. amen. Say Abraham is the father of us all. Are you here? Say it now. Abraham Say Abraham is the father of faith. So he's about to teach us something about the father of faith. What he learned. And this thing he learned is a revelation of Christ. And the lifestyle of Christ you should pay attention to. Go to the next verse, everybody. As it is written. Now, we're, listen, we're looking at faith. Is that not so? Faith begins with the knowledge of the world. Is that not true? What was written? What God said. Is that not true? Is it not true? The written scripture, is it not a product of the voice of God? All scriptures are given by the inspiration of God. The inspiration of God are product of God's words. That was implanted as thoughts in the hearts of men so they can write the scriptures. Is that not true? Yes. Yeah. Holy men wrote as they were moved by God. How were they moved? God spoke to them. He spoke to their thoughts. Everything they wrote about scripture came from God's mouth. Hello? Because the word inspiration is the word breath. And breath is words. When you speak, it's breath that is speaking. Biologically, they tell you that you're compressing uh, uh, breath or breeze at different frequency to make different sounds. Is that not so? If you say yes, there's a way your vocal cord presses the air to give that sound yes. When you say no, there's a way your vocal cord compresses air and says no. So breath means words. So when we say the inspirations of God, we're talking about the words of God. As it is written, in the time of Abraham, there was no written scripture. Are you with me? But, but we're looking at it from our time to his time. It is not written because we have the documentation down. So it's been referred to, it is written. But from the time of Abraham, what was written was what was spoken. Are you paying attention? Please. Do I see some of you looking around? Are you paying attention? As it is written, which came from what was spoken, God told Abraham, I have what? Made thee. A father of many nations. How did he do that? He gave him two promises. One, the one in Genesis 12, when he said to Abraham, leave your father's house, go to the land which I will show you of, or tell thee of. He says, as you go, I'll bless you. Is that not so? 
I'll bless you. I'll make your name great. I'll bless those that bless you and I'll curse those that curse you. And in you shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. That's the first promise God gave to him. Then the second promise God gave to him was when he upgraded his name from Abraham to what? Abraham. Which means father of nations. So Abraham had two rema or two spoken word of God to him about his destiny. Through what God had said, God said to him, you are going to be father of nations. That's what God said. That's God's reality to him. But he had a condition that could threaten what God said. And that condition was a barren wife. Hello? Are you still here? And the beautiful things about the promise God made was this. Listen, oh. God not only told, please stay with me. God not only told Abraham, you're going to be father of nation. Guess what? The son from which the nation will come from, will come through your wife. Ooh. Hey, hey. If he had said father of many nations, Abraham would have said, yes. Hey, God, come on, come here. <laughs> Bring all the concubines. Oh, yeah, line up one by one. You'll be distributing seed just like that. Say, God, I said I'll be fathers of a nation. Like some people will honestly quote, go here and multiply, idiot. It means to be jumping around and be burning everywhere. That's kind of interpretation of scripture. Abraham could have said, okay, uh, Sarah, you are old. Your time don't pass. Your clock has stopped. No, it's not stopped. There's no even clock, Seth. Go and sit down. Bring all the young, young comp- He could have done that. But, but God said, when, when, when he mentioned it, Abraham first of all laughed. See, that laugh was that, <laughs> did you look at my wife before you, you are coming to tell me this thing you are saying? Hey, God, she's almost 90 years old. 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90 years old women don't, they're not they're born again. Oh, hello, are you hearing me? That was what the condition was screaming. You're 90 years old. And I'm almost 100. I suppose not they retire by now. God says, no. That wife that you said is 90 is going to give birth to a seed. Why? Because I am God. Nothing is impossible with me. So he had a promise. But there was a condition that would challenge the promise. But Abraham had to choose between the promise and the condition. He said, as it is written, I have made the father of men before him whom he believed. Listen to me and listen very well. Anything God has said to you will remain hope until you choose to believe it. If God said you will have a baby, as long as you don't believe, yeah, having the baby will, be, will become like a hope. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing me? And I'm going to show you how Abraham believed and engaged the language of faith to produce Isaac. So that every one of you will produce your biological Isaac, you produce your business Isaac, you produce your marital Isaac, you produce all forms of Isaac that are necessary. Because Isaac is proof of the goodness of God at work in your life. My time is up. Rise up on your feet. Continue in the second service. Have you been blessed? Father, we give you thanks. We pray that these words will take root in our hearts and begin to bear fruits in our lives. In the priceless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for another opportunity to honor you with our offering. We give joyfully, gladly, with all our hearts. Acknowledge you always as our source supplier and sustainer in Jesus precious name we pray Amen. Amen.